Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we're joined here by a goal scorer. You know, wherever he goes, he gets goals. Um, Britt Asombolonga. Britt, thank you for joining us. Nah, no problem, man. Anytime, man. So we've got um, a few questions for you. We just kind of want to get to know you as well as we can. So um, what was the feeling like when you first signed your professional contract at Watford? Is that when you knew that you've made it as a professional footballer? No, nah, I think for me it was obviously the fact me getting that is when I know the real, real hard work started. Obviously it was hard work trying to get into it, but I think it's, it's double hard trying to maintain staying in the game. So like for me, it was like, I need to, I need to up my game now mm-hmm. and like show more than like what I was showing when I got the, when I got the contract. Because I don't want to stay on the same level, so that I had to just to work even harder. Yeah, and and you went through the is it Hertzwood Impact Scheme um, yeah. before you signed your contract. How did that help you develop as a person and as a player? Uh, it's good because it's like because yeah, because I'm, I'm a down to earth person, so like yeah. I think like that that route was just like made for me. You know, I didn't I didn't obviously go into the academies when I was like eight nine. 10, you know, obviously I came into the game late, you know, I, I went to the academy at 17 and then that's when I signed my professional contract. So like for me, like that, you know, that step was, was, was perfect for me, you know, that, that path, like going through the scheme, you know, I was going to the college and, um, you know, I was, I was doing the Watford uh, impact scheme. So like, which was like the development and, you know, we, we playing games and then, one day the coach says, like, oh, you got a, you got a trial at Watford. So then, obviously, I went to this trial. Uh, I remember going to the first trial. There was a first trial. And this was in this was in the winter. And, obviously, I went to the trial. And then I went in about December time. And then in January, it snowed hard. Training got cancelled. Um, didn't know when they, uh, didn't know when they can get me in. So... I didn't. I didn't know what was what was happening. So like, I waited another like three months, thinking, "Oh, this this is this has gone out the window." Until I got another call when the new um, uh, new guy called Nick 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 Cox came in and he said he called and said, "Oh, why didn't you come come again?" And then that's when I had my proper proper trial. Yeah, and you you that's you, you that that just shows that you were just meant it was meant to happen, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, it, I do believe in everything happens for a reason, and uh, it, w- it was meant to happen. Like um, obviously, it didn't happen at first, and um, you know, now, now I'm here. You know, like because even at like, the first trial, like I, it's crazy that like, because the first trial, the manager at that point was Mark Warburton. He was then obviously coach of Brentford, and obviously when I was out not in the forest, he came. He became the coach then, and we even like laughed about it. Because we were, I came on trial there whilst he was the manager, and obviously he 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 went on, and that's when the new manager came in, and you know, and that's when um, I got asked to come for a trial, and it's just it's just crazy because it could have been more different. Yeah, definitely, and and you spoke about how even from the start you knew that you always wanted to go levels up. You've been you've been a record signing pretty much every single place that you you've been to. So what is it like? What kind of pressure does that? come along, you know, with a club, you know, decided we're going to make you our record sign. We expect you to get the goals. How does that make you feel? Yeah, no, you know, if you, if everyone tells you there's no pressure, there's a little bit of pressure. In, in life, there's pressure in life. There's pressure, you know, in, in, the work, in the workplace, you know. You are brought in to deliver. So you have to deliver. <laughs> like, so, you know, me going in there, knowing I'm the record sign, I just say, I just got to believe in myself, like, there was a reason why they got me, and my ability got me somewhere, and my goal scoring got me here as well. So I just got to put all the things together and say, you know what, I'm here for a reason. Let me just try to do the best I can and follow on what, from what I've done before. So that's the only thing. I I never, you know, put the price tag on my head. No, I'm this player. And I need to do this. And, no, no, no. I just go about my business. Yeah, there might be a little bit of pressure, but you. You know, you just try not to show it and you just go about your business. I can always tell you that every striker always looks for that first goal. <laughs> so once you get that, it kind of, that, that yeah, so-called pressure goes. <sighs> <You> know, <laughs> breathe, breathe. 
So, you know, it's good, man. And, and talking about, you know, not thinking about the pressure and just going for it. I mean, you've shown that at Peterborough, your, your record at Peterborough was fantastic as after, you know, them spending the, that, that amount of money. How, was your, how would you sum up your time at the club? Uh, I, I loved every moment of it. Even though I was there for like, what, nine months, you know, I wasn't expecting to be leaving that, you know, that quick. And obviously, like, I, I, I owe a lot to Darren Ferguson because, you know, he, he's a great manager and he's one of my favourite managers out there. And um, he, he helped me along the way in a, in a, in a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, just like going from there, because obviously I came, I was on loan at South End at the time. And, you know, the plan was to go out on loan again, you know, in that season. And then people said, you know what, we'll, we'll sign you. But what if we didn't want it? So then, you know, it was kind of like, I want to go play some games. I don't want to sit on the bench. Like, you know, I want to try it prove myself and then hopefully I can come back but then obviously we made it permanent and then you know the rest of history. And you, you spoke about you know Darren Ferguson playing a big role in, in your, your time at Peterborough. What was it about him that helped you excel as a goal scorer and as a player? I don't know, he, he was ruthless. He was ruthless. He, he was a ruthless guy but he, he knew how to like manage the players. Like I, I got I'll give him that. He knew how to manage the, every single player. He knew which players he needed to, to give really to and which players that he needed to put a arm around. And you know, he just he always wanted the best out of the players and every training session was hard and you know, the football we played was very good and you know it, you know, it was disappointing that we didn't, you know, get promoted that year. And, you know, obviously we, we went to Wembley and won the the, the, the trophy at Wembley. But you know, you know, ideally we wanted to get promoted, and obviously losing in the semi-final it was like heartbreaking. And I mean, you you definitely paid it, paid them back. You scored at Wembley, and like you said, you you won the trophy. How was that? How was that feeling for you? The trophy was massive. It was like it was like a Champions League trophy. You know, like it, it was a massive achievement for me, just holding the trophy. You know, just you know, and it being at Wembley as well. Like, um, because I'm from London, and you know. My whole family came to watch, you know. So like, it was it was it was a it was a great experience, you know. Obviously, just being out there and just spotting the the family there with all their little banners, like, you know, it, it, it was something that you know I always cherish. Yeah, I can I can imagine it. You know, you you'll never forget that day. Honestly, it was it was crazy. Like, cause when I was at South End the year before, we went to went to the final, same trophy, and then we lost. So you can only imagine me going there again to the final and thinking, ah, hopefully we don't lose this or, you know, all them things run in your mind. You just, you know, you just don't want to get another defeat under your belt at Wembley, you know. And, you know, we, we had the red card as well. And then, um, you know, to, to get on the score sheet, it's, just, uh, it's memorable. And you, you moved on to Nottingham Forest, you know, another record signing. Um, how was your time there? I know you had a, a really bad injury and you were out for a while. How, how did you deal with that as well? Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed uh, my, my time at Nottingham. Uh, um, I was really excited signing at Nottingham. <laughs> it's crazy because I've got another story here about, my, about Nottingham. Is when I was... Uh, 14, I had a trial at Nottingham and uh, I had a six week trial and I got a letter through the post saying that um, I, wasn't, I wasn't good enough to, to, to obviously play for, for, for Nottingham and they obviously signed um, two other guys in my position so you know obviously at 14 is a bit heartbreaking knowing that and then um, six, seven years later you're <laughs> the record signing for the club it's crazy yeah that 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 is a story your story is a story and a half not giving up just keep going and you always end up where you're supposed to end up as i'm saying like if everything happens i've got a bit tattooed here man like everything happens for a reason like you just you gotta stay positive i just think in life like you gotta bring positivity in life from your family the people around you and bring it to the workplace you know and that's how a lot of people excel you know you know, there's a lot of like mental health issues and stuff that people don't really understand. You know, and like, you know, 
credit for them, you know, to that they keep fighting and they keep pushing whilst playing football, you know. And you know, I just try to stay positive, you know, because you got I got I got a young family, I've got two kids, and you know, I just try to do everything for 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 them, you know. And uh, I just want to show them that just being positive, man, is a way of life, and it you know brings you happiness. And and you had you had an unfortunate like quite a long layoff, you know, with injury at Nottingham. As as a player, how do you deal with that and just being on the sidelines for so long? Yeah, no, it was hard. It was a big it was a big injury for me. Obviously, I was out for fourteen months. Um, you know, obviously, I got told by the surgeon that I probably won't be able to play again. And uh, you know, hearing that is tough. You've just moved. Six months in, like, was top goal scorer at the time. You know, I was on 15 goals. And I was thinking, you know, I can, I can, you know, replicate what I did at, uh, what I did at, at Peterborough. Obviously, hearing that from the surgeon, you know, it, it, it took me back and it just made me think about life. And at the same time, it made me think, you know what, like, let me prove it wrong. And uh, that's what I did. Yeah, and you, you definitely came back with a bang. Like you've had teammates describe you as the best goal scorer in the league, and also say that you're the best goal scorer outside the Premier League. So, have you been close to a move to the Premier League? Uh, no, I haven't been. I haven't been close to one to to the Premier League. Um, it's a goal of mine to 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 play in the Premier League. You know, even just just score in the Premier League as well. Then I can say that. You know, I've scored in every single league <laughs> from the bottom to, to the top, you know, and it's a massive achievement. And I'm obviously just hope and pray that one day I'll be able to play there. And and now you're at, you're at Middlesbrough. Um, how, how has it been for you at, at Borough? Uh, obviously, a lot of expectations for us to go straight back up. Uh, obviously, there was, there's been a lot of change. A lot of players, like the first season, we had a load of players come in. And then we had um, a load of players come out. We had the manager sacked. Uh, new manager comes in. You know, a lot of things change, and it's just like a, it's a whole different vibe, you know. Because obviously everyone's played one way, and then obviously when the managerial changes, you're you you have to play another way. So it's just there's loads of factors that you know. See that we didn't go up, you know. When we the team that we have. And had like we, you know, I know in ourselves that we feel like we probably should have, but you know that's just life. You know, sometimes it's not meant to be. It's maybe not meant to be in that time. So you just have to keep going, and you know, hope that you know it can come around for us. And you spoke about you know there being so many managerial changes as a player, as a striker especially. How does that affect you, and and how hard does it make you know your your job and adapting to a club? Well, I think I think not just for me. I think it's just difficult with everyone because, especially with with, with strikers as well. Like you want to be able to build a partnership with certain people in the, in the team on the pitch. So you know, like with managerial changes, it's always going to chop and change because managers, you know, is going to like this player, maybe not like this player. You know, every manager has their reasons, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. That's a uh, the manager manager makes the decision at at the end of it. It's just like my time at Nottingham. I think I had about seven managers in my time there. So, like, I've, I've been used to the cho- the chop and change, you know. And at the end of the day, it shouldn't stop you from trying to do what you can do. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, you, you hear a lot about players kind of giving that excuse or saying, you know, they didn't try their best because of a manager. So it's good to kind of hear that regardless, you just have to, you know, keep going. So what's your relationship like with Jonathan Wood- Woodgate? Oh, he's he's a great manager. Like uh, I really I really like the guy, and um, obviously he's honest with his players. And the, uh, you know, I say I had it when Tony Pulis was our manager. He was a uh, one of the first team coaches. So like I spoke to him a lot, and um, you know he 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 always gave me good advice, and he always you know kept me um, he kept kept my morals up. You know, because obviously when I was under Tony Pulis, I didn't play as much. So, you know, Leo's was there, like, to make sure, like, I was always good and just tell me to keep going, keep pushing, regardless. And, you know, him being the manager now, like, he's still the same. Like, you know, I don't think he's changed in any way. Yeah, and you were saying you, you spent, you know, 
a bit of time on the bench under Pulis. How hard is it for a manager to expect you to always come off the bench and have an impact? Yet, you know, you're, you're it's starting from the bench. Thing. It's the hardest thing to come off the bench and 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 score because coming on five minutes, you're just hoping something just drops for you. But then within that five minutes, you haven't even got your second win yet. <laughs> so you're just hoping you're just hoping that something just drops for you and it just favours you in that time. Because I've been I've been there. There've been times where I've scored goals that's come off my knee or. You know, I've there's been a pile of bodies, but the ball just drops to me. You see, you just have that goal score and run, and then sometimes you just have them them days where nothing drops for you. You get you're in the right places, you're in the same places that you was last week, but the ball is not going there, and it's just it's just one of them ones. You have to just buy your time and just wait. And when something drops for you, then you just have to take that in your stride and just live for that moment because sometimes it might not come again. So you just have to be happy for that moment. Yeah, definitely. And and I mean, I can imagine, especially now that, you know, the league is on hold, um, you, everyone's kind of lost momentum. How how are you coping, you know, being at home, not having your routine of going to training sessions? And how's the squad as a whole coping with not knowing what's going to happen? Yeah, I, know, I think for everyone, it's, it's been tough because, you know, everyone wants to get back. And obviously, we want to finish the season. You know, because it being on hold is, uh, you know, it's a bit frustrating because obviously no one can really do anything to go anywhere. So, you know, I think, I think as a whole, it's been hard for for all the players. But at the same time, you have to count the blessings as well, because me playing in Middlesbrough, I'm not, I'm away from my family down here. So, you know, to be to see my little son grow up, you know, I, I probably we don't have got the chance being up in uh, being up in Middlesbrough. But, you know, this, you have to sometimes take the positives out the negatives. And uh, maybe I, I needed to spend some time with them and then go back. And, you know, everything could be, could be good for me. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's one thing. Everyone's spent so much time with their family. I think going forward, we'll all try and, you know, spend more time with our families, you know, after, after this experience. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, you, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So being with your family is... Uh, is one of the most important things, you know, just like I said, like watching my my little boy grow, you know, watching my little girl run every day non-stop, telling her go to sleep, she's like, wow, and you know, it's just them little things, it's just, just, to, just to see them every day and wake up to them and, you know, even though you, you're you running out, run for them, get me, can you get me juice, can you get me this, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, it's all love. Yeah, and and you know, talking about family, you you represented Congo um, in two thousand and eighteen, and you know your your dad played. Your dad was a a player for Congo too. Um, how was it for you? And when did you know that it was the right time to represent Congo? Obviously, I had a lot of. Um, I don't know. I wanted to wait my time um, because you know, being young, I wanted to obviously try my luck with England growing up. And obviously, you know, it, it didn't it didn't work out for me. Like I just uh, thought, you know, maybe it is time to represent my country. And I'm um, not saying that it was second fiddle, but you know, if you asked everyone what was their dream growing up in England, it was to play for England. And obviously, that was that was one of my dreams. And then when I actually went to Congo, like it was actually a dream come true playing for them. Then you actually, you, I actually felt a part of the country. Yeah, and how how much did your dad kind of have to play in that? How how does he feel about you playing for Congo? Oh, he obviously, obviously loves it, but he always said to me, like, he doesn't mind where who I played for. He said, as long as I'm happy, and as long as um, I'm happy playing my football, he said he would support me all the way. So he was never pressured, never pressured me to play for Congo, but obviously then playing for Congo and, you know, scoring my first goal and seeing him burst into tears well, it was amazing. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, we, we all saw that that you, you can kind of tell how much it meant to him, you know, so it must have even meant a lot more to you. Yeah, no, it was crazy because obviously when I celebrate, I couldn't see him, obviously, up in the stands, but then uh, I was on the, I was in the change rooms and um, 
I was just seeing, I was just seeing my phone blowing up, and I was thinking, like, it's obviously just because I scored, scored the goal. But then uh, there was a video sent to me, and I was just seeing my dad like it. I was like, oh my days! Like, I nearly brought a tear to, to my eye, you know. And you know, I can only imagine if if my dad's crying like that, and I'd love to see him cry. I can only imagine my mum back at home. <laughs> yeah, we, there's no footage of that, but I can imagine yeah, she, can she imagine. went nuts. <laughs> Yeah, and and so, what's your what's your aspirations with you know going forward with Congo? You know, I'd I'd like to to play as much as I can. You know, you know, obviously I, we went to the round of sixteens in the African Nations. You know, and, and I hope in the future I can be a part of it and and go forward with them. You know, better than the round of sixteen because we have a we have a good team and I think we can we can do we can do really well. And I just hope. Hope I can be uh, a part of it. I mean, thank you, thank you for you know answering our questions. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out. We have a few a few questions from you know fans, big fans of yours on Twitter that you want to ask yeah. and, and get to know more. So, Teach Parks um, asked, "How close were you to signing for Sheffield United last summer?" <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. And um, Nathan Raynor said, "What are your top three favorite goals that you've ever scored?" My top three favorite goals. Would have to put in order, right? Uh, I scored in a in a derby game against Derby for Nottingham Forest. Uh, my first um, derby game for them. Left foot. Um, that goal, uh, you know, it wasn't like in terms of the best goals I scored in my career, but just the feel of that, and like when I scored that goal, like I, it for me, it just it just felt like the ground was shaking. It was that much noise. The packed stadium at the city ground it was amazing. Um, another one would have to be when I uh, came off the bench uh, against Blackburn for Middlesbrough. And um, I've got, I've got the, I did a pass it to the left back, left back, did a striker, sits off for me, and just outside the box, I've whipped it. And I, I do not score many goals outside the box. I can tell you that. So for me, it's a, it's that's a big achievement. And another one outside the box for, uh, for Peterborough, um, against Bristol City, outside the box, left foot banger. So they're, they're probably my top three. That's a, that's a solid selection. I and mean, you have Jack um, asking, what is it like playing for Tony Pulis? Uh, he's a different man, i tell you that. He's uh, different to all the managers that I've, uh, that I've been under. Um, he's a man of his ways, and he's a man that sticks to his ways, and um, credit to him for that. You know, he's, he, you know, he's got a track record of uh, keeping, keeping teams up and um, keeping... Uh, a, a solid team, so you know you have to respect him in in, in that sense. See, I didn't play much under him, but um, you know everyone has uh, has their ways, and everyone and managers entitled to their choice of uh, player. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Thomas asked, "Do you see your future at Middlesbrough? Do you believe they play to your style?" Um, I, f- I think I've just I've been in different styles with obviously different managers. I've, I've had three managers there. There's, it's all three different styles, so um, you know I've got I've got a year left after the season, and I guess we just have to see what happens uh, with what we want to do in the, in that respect. And then you have Gary um, asking, "What's your favourite goal for Forest?" Oh, it would have to be the one that I just said. It has yeah. to be the one against Derby at home. And then you have Mark asking which of your goals against Derby is your best. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all know the one at home, the best one. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> and then you have um, Sabri um, asking <laughs> this one. I, I was cracking up at this, right? He said, Is God telling you to move this summer? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I had, I had a lot of that when I moved to, when I moved to Middlesbrough. I, I don't know why, but. You know, obviously, when I, I made my message, obviously, when I signed for Middlesbrough, and, you know, I was like, thank you to God. But then, I don't know, everyone, a lot of people took that out of context and said, 
saying did God tell you to move? But I'm my own man. I make my own decisions. And I just thank God that he's just provided me with the chance. And, you know, I thank, thank my family. And then last question from Dej. He said, um, what is it about the Peterborough environment that allows players to push on to the next level? So he gave examples of yourself, Dwight Gill, George Boyd, Marcus Madison, Ryan Bennett, who, you know, gone from Peterborough to pretty good levels. Well, most of them... Uh, most of them played under Darren Ferguson, didn't they? So I guess that I guess he's the man then. <laughs> that's that's my answer. It's him. Yeah. So would you say he's been you know the most influential in the? You know? Yeah, I think he's been the most influential of all the players, and I think every player can probably vouch for him and say that he's done an amazing job with them, and not just the strikers, because I know the strikers are the ones that you know are in the limelight. But I think for all the players, you know. Like he was like he was a father figure to me, and you know I think everyone everyone really loved him. Great, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for no, thank out. you for having. Me. No, it's a pleasure, man, and you've you've given us some great answers, and you know getting to know you more, and you know we we know you're a goal scorer, and you know I could I could bet my house on you ending up in the <laughs> Premier League, you know, but you're gonna have to cover me if if that's the case, but I, I'm so sure that within <laughs> the next few summers, man. you know. I'm pushing to get, hopefully, fingers crossed, I get over that line, man. It's yeah, there. definitely, man. You're, 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 you know, a goal scorer. You, no one can doubt that about you. So I'll be expecting to see you very shortly in the Premier League. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you, man. Thank you.